I'm dreaming through, I mean, like, so vivid. Yeah. So real. I mean, most dreams you got to forget. I, I mean, I can remember this, even though this was a good, what, 15, 16 years ago. I can remember every aspect of it. There was a school bus driver for some weird fucking reason. You know what I mean? I went to this weird little ice cream shop. It was on Hollywood, but not the Hollywood. It was just, again, it was Hollywood, and everything was almost exactly as I knew it, but then the other things that weren't. Like the whole man from Torrid mm-hmm. thing, if you guys have seen that story. And <laughs> I, it disconcerted me and does this day because it was so fucking real. I don't know how else to explain it. it. And it almost made more sense to the point where, like, okay, is the place where Laurel Canyon goes over the thing, the, the fucking fucked up one? Is that where I actually am from? Was that where I lived my whole life and somehow I bipped over to this shit? You know what I mean? And I've only had this dream once. Yeah. And nothing, like, really, terrible. It was just, you no, know, remember driving through it. This is weird. Why is it, you know, Laurel Canyon? You know what I mean? And it's still, still called, uh, I think that different yeah. name too. It wasn't Laurel Canyon. It was like Laurel something or other. I still knew it was, but it just, and again, there was just enough things. Everything was so similar. Laurel Canyon Drive? No, it wasn't even that. It was, <laughs> I, think it was, I, think it was, I think it was still called Laurel Canyon, but Laurel Pass or something as well. You yeah. Know, something weird with something. Laurel but yeah, Canyon the, Pass. The, the, I can see it now, the vividness of it, the reality of it, the tunnel, yeah. the street, the slight differences in, in, in the paving and the lights and things. I lived in Hollywood for a long time. I stroll up and down. My friends live there. I have spent years. I know those streets intimately. If there's any part I do know, it's that. And and this dream, it was so close. I said, just, I, I can see it to this day. You know what I mean? And I honestly don't know if it was just me in a different reality of me, a different time extension, a possibility, a really weird, trippy dream. I don't know. I can't say. What I personally believe and feel is, yeah, that's just a me that is me. In that alternate dimension, I just happened to bip into him, and maybe he was dreaming about me at the same time for whatever reason. Who knows why? Yeah. You know what I mean? But I remember that, you know, the school bus driver, but I was alone. I mean, there were no kids on the bus. You know, I remember pulling up this little ice cream thing and meeting my parents in there. You know, and then, like, some minor, like, all here's like a cop car. And I think that's what happened. I think it's more significant events, which you tend to be around, like, whatever was happening outside with the police and people, that was what the significant event was, and my own shit was – not irrelevant to, but not as relevant as that. And so that's my, that's, that's all I can think about time travel and, and, and oh, uh, like ancestral talk. memory and stuff like that personally. But yeah, it, it's just the little details that'll let you know for sure. Yeah. Well, well, I the, I don't you you ain't Kansas happen. anymore, Dorothy. Well, here's something that's interesting. I think it well, relates. I'll take another shot. Like, um, in the, people don't realize if you, I read a lot of mythology and uh, in all the mythologies, it's, there's always a food that makes you immortal. Okay. But it's not only the food. The food is just one small part of the immortality thing, okay? Oh, combined, so <laughs> Heat. You need extreme heat yes. in every single one. You either have to go through a gate that's extremely hot, or they actually, when one, Demeter is actually holding a baby over a fire, and the people freak out, and she's like, I was trying to make your baby immortal, you know? And, you know? But, like, it's always heat. And it's always the food. And I've had many, many high. I had a fever of 110 when I was a baby, and I've had many yeah, 105 which, which fevers. Usually, an adult, let alone a kid. And I think it has an effect. I do. I really do. Because, like, okay, when I was 13 or so, I was like, I didn't feel very loved. And I was like, when is someone gonna love me? And they, they told me, they told me about you actually. Oh. But they showed me. But they. <laughs> but they showed me. That was nicer than my kids. That was. But I suddenly, I, I was in another time. Suddenly, I was in the dark laying in my bed, and suddenly it was daylight. And suddenly, I was in a chateau, and the, there was gold filigree all over the walls, and there was a hallway with all these servants, and I was laying there with, I think it was him in a past life, but he had blue eyes then, much darker skinned at the time. I think it was Europe. I think he was like the son of someone that he always is, and I was just some bitch as I always am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pan manifests in a lot of people, Mark. He's he's been yes. present. And he's like yeah, the Amy, father. I, I, actually, he's, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I don't know if anybody else has ever been on a hallucinogen, specifically LSD, and, yeah. and done the telepathy thing. Like you look at people, like can you hear my fucking thoughts? Can you hear my fucking Yeah, I've done that once. Yeah. Not not unpleasant, just really, really like we are actually. Like, if I'm looking at you and your lips ain't moving, or you look at me and my lips ain't moving, and I can hear. And yeah, like, you, like, it really yeah. does open your mind. It really does. It's just and that lasted all about, I don't know, like 30 seconds, reading, and then it was just, we, we probably could have done it all right, but it was so weird. Just didn't, like, because, I mean, cause it's not, I think we we did this for a reason, team, because celebrity can just be uncomfortable in our current vibration when you're much higher. It's beautiful. You know what I mean? Well, the thing it's is, just, you if you have any private thoughts, yeah, you don't want people too. to know about. But if, yeah, you're in a, I, uh, if you're in a culture with telepathy, 
they're going to at least have an inkling of what's going on with you behind Thank closed you. doors. Thank you. We love you. I hope you, you know? have something. I hope you have something on. But we were actually, here's the weird thing. We were tripping watching, of all things, we were just, it was a lonely Friday night. Like, we got nothing to do. We got a couple of shit, but nowhere to go. No parties, nothing back in the early days. We just figured we'd kick it, right? Started to pop an Alice in Wonderland of all fucking things because <laughs> we thought it'd be fun to get all gacked out and see weird shit on Alice. This cartoons, right? And yeah, like I said, we just, after about 30 seconds, we, we just kind of both decided, let's just never do this again and, <laughs> and watch yeah, it. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and then watch Alice in Wonderland on absolutely like, yeah, oh my that, God, dude. I've been I can imagine. There's, there's some scary stuff imagery. And I, went, that, and, I, and, and I actually had an amazing experience. I went to my grad night at Disneyland on acid in a tux. And I got to say, there's something that, that, that was the true thing of white privilege because I was young, I had a little tuxedo on, and I felt fucking invulnerable. <laughs> it didn't matter. A suit does make you vulnerable as a man. You know what I mean? Enough. And yeah, I can't yeah. say kudos to Disney, man. You made a great part for a man fucking seeing rainbows, because that shit was awesome. Space Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, fucking... No, but the whole point is, like, Thank when I, I'm sunshine. laying there in bed 13 years old, okay, and suddenly I'm, it's daylight, so I'm in a different body, you know, I'm looking at all this stuff, and it was as physically yeah. real to me as sitting here right now it was. It was as if I traveled in time, like that. there was an old time travel movie where it was just your consciousness. And it was literally like my consciousness just went into another body in, in the past. And, like, I was there for about five seconds. And then that's all, you know. And I had another experience, and I think that was a past life, you know, before I was ready to get out of these lives. And then I had another one. This one's really weird. I had a my, I had a fever again of about 105 at the time, so this is part of what probably did this. Uh, I still miss Soul Train, man. I love yeah. watching that show. My brother's on it for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's well, cool. I didn't know that. I want the whole 144,000 thing, man, because I utterly oh. refuse to believe heaven is a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> well, here I, mean, actually, like, I I know what this means. I, I if this was revealed to me as I was doing research, it's literally okay. There were 12 tribes of Israel, okay. And they had a certain number of people in each tribe, okay? The 144,000 are the percentage of people together from each tribe. Who it was, It's basically like 12% of each tribe were going to make it. That makes about 144,000. Hey, each Ruben. tribe is supposed to be represented by an astrological sign, though. Basically, each tribe was ruled by – there would be a tribe that was ruled by Pisces. There would be a tribe that was ruled by Taurus, you know? And uh, basically, the idea – that I'm gathering from the research I've done, they're expecting about 12% of each astrological sign to make it, is what they're saying. The reason it's 144,000 is they were only counting Jews, and that was approximately the number of people that they expected from the numbers they had then. Okay? So it's 12% of each astrological sign is expected to make it to the next level. So be in the 12%. <laughs> Meditate. Do, <laughs> do your work. You'll get there. You know, <laughs> you can get, this is the time to graduate. <laughs> this is the time. But, like, yeah, no, I mean, there's all kinds of cool and unique stuff happening. So it's the time. It's a, this is the time to, 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 to work in, to work I on yourself. I think you are too, guys. She says she's sure you're sisters. Oh, I'm sure, too. I, I, I've had so many, dude. What sucks with me is, like, a part of me has been stuck here Back when temple so prostitutes long. were loved and revered and not spat. Well, they were temple prostitutes, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look how bad it sucks to have to be a nun from that. You know what I mean? Like, what a devolution. I'm sorry, man. Nuns have to be a nun, dude. <laughs> well, anyway, they, they're not allowed to even accept. Like, the whole idea was to, that you were, they actually believed that sexuality tamed men, that it made people more peaceful and more loving and less violent, you know? So they, this is, was the thing. You were supposed to take these wild men and like tame them and shit like look at there's a story of the gilgamesh story they actually sent a temple priestess to enkidu who was like a caveman basically he was like a primitive one of our ancestors a primitive human and she slept with him for a week and by the time that he was over he was a civilized man apparently <laughs> <laughs> Like, it has the power, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, he was willing to learn because he wanted more. That's what happened, you know? <laughs> you know, but that was fine. Yep. That was that yep. was his belief at the time. And it was beautiful. It kept people from getting hurt. If the guys were, if there were incels, there were no incels. If there was an incel, he went to the temple, paid a coin, and he could have sex if he wanted to, okay? And it, it, because he was having sex with the goddess through these people who were there. Actually, in some cultures, every woman had to go and serve one time. 
in a lot of the cultures that way. Yeah. It's true of Babylon. Anyway. It was like democracy in Greece. It's like, of course yeah. you don't like it. It's a sucky job. So go do a good job. and proud of you to do a good job at a crappy position. Yeah. You know what I mean? And walk like you had to lose your life. virginity that way, basically. And then you had then you could get married in some cultures, which some people would think was very bad. And I understand that. It doesn't have to be sexual like that. But, it, you know, if people, there are people, I knew a girl who was so sweet of heart. She was like, it was like she was born to do this because she would literally, these guys would tell her that they hadn't had sex in years. They met her if they were, this, they were, they were, one guy was like just a big hairy biker guy. And these guys were like, we were young girls, you know? And yep. she, she was like, I feel so sorry for them. I can't stand it. She really genuinely felt for them. She really felt bad that people, yeah. she was just so loving like that, you know? And I, I could not get it. I was like, these guys don't respect you for being nice to them, you know? And, like, you know, but she couldn't, she didn't even care. She couldn't even get that. She was just too good. Okay, you know? so sweet. She's like, I don't care. She was just so sweet. She's gone I, I'm now. I'm cool with you myself. Know? She's she passed her so. Yeah. She was a, a sweet soul. She was a real sweet soul. That's why I, I remember her, you know? We didn't always get along, but she was always a good person, you know? Yeah. So that's a good thing. But, yeah, I mean... You know, there's a lot of, there's a time, it's a, like, there's a lot of ways to be good, okay? But as the whole thing is just like Jesus said, love others as you would have them love you and put God above all things. Basically, if you see someone in a situation, what would you want someone to have done for you long term, okay? That's it. If you can do that, that's all I've done. And, and, and like, I have loved, like, a lot of people are afraid of the Adokian angels, but they're really cool to me. And apparently, literally, you just have to be trying, you know? The thing with and the a Adokian lot of people are in denial is, about is, their is, shit. They're very, they're very matter of fact. Yeah. They, they all are. play. You know, and most people kind of, I have a little latitude yeah. here, a little latitude there. I can, get, you know, wheeze on this homework assignment and show up a few minutes later. They hate it. They no. hate any kind they, of deception. Their, their whole thing is 100% totality. Yeah. Or nothing. And a lot of magicians who have to them have darkness, and they don't want to admit it, and they don't want to deal with it. They you, will basically you know? let you burn yourself. The whole point. Yeah. They'll say, "Oh, you want a machine gun, little chimpanzee? Here you go. Here's two automatics. They will. Magazines. Yeah. Tracer bullets. Knock yourself out. They will. Yeah. They're hardcore. And you can't bring myself up and shit. I don't give a shit. Because we all see our own deception. And in the past, it was something people would talk, and they'd be like, "Oh, human nature, and all this." And they are kind of understood there was something they couldn't control. But literally, as we grow, as we go through the change in ages, we are actually shedding dark things that were attached to us, parts of ourselves. And we are actually more capable of being good than they were. There was a great quote really, who said truly, this last night. The trick of the darkness is to make the righteous path so hard, so impossible, so fucking difficult that it seems that there's only one choice. It's true. It's true. It's and I agree. Really and that sense, you, you do have no choice. Like, I, you mean? <laughs> We're going to wind up on that, guys. Thanks. But We're going to have to wind up on that, but that was a good note to end on. Yeah. So. I get it. It's not easy. It's the hardest thing you will do in life before death. You know what I mean? And, and if you fall, don't begrudge yourself. Don't blame yourself. Don't hate yourself. But do stand up again. Just keep trying. They'll always yeah. be, the angels will always be there to help you. If you're really sincere From a man like trying, Sylvester Stallone, insane wisdom, okay? It's not how hard you can hit. It's how many times you can get knocked down and get back up again. It is. It is. That's what makes it you is. a warrior. It is. That's the... You're all warriors. Yeah. We love all of you. You guys have a great love week. Love you, too. We'll see you. Oh, Bye-bye. real quick, I got a little thing called Galaxy S7 out there, a little bit of humor. We'll try and post a link to it just yeah. to give you guys a smile and yeah. it's have a little, something on your face. A little, a little thing I did my film class, so maybe that makes you smile. Check it out. All okay. right, guys, we love you all. Bye-bye. Have a great thing. You're very welcome, man. All right, let's get that. Thank you, thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you so love much, you. guys. Love you all.